We got up real early this morning, 6 a.m. I got in from Fort McMurray last night at 12.30 a.m. Uh, so rolling off a little sleep. But I slept on the airplane and actually slept pretty decent last night. Fred, uh, right over here, he came out for the adventure. We're driving out to the west coast right now. And we're going to spearfish today and spearfish tomorrow. Uh, we don't know how the visibility is going to be. I think it's going to be a bit windy this afternoon. Uh, but we should be able to find some shelter. We're on a boat too, which is awesome. Uh, we're meeting up with uh, Wally and his kids again. Uh, they're great, great guys to have around. And uh, we're going to help them out too and teach them what we know in the water. Uh, so we're going to slay it, hopefully. Get some good uh, protein to bring home. And have a real, real fun time. You checked the water temperature too, didn't you? Yeah, and it's supposed to be 16 surface, so yeah. like way warmer in Victoria actually. 16 degrees at the surface, that's like tropical for, for British Columbia standards. <laughs> I should have brought my uh, three mount suit. I only got my seven, immenso, but uh, yeah, I'd rather be a little bit too warm than shivering. Here at Walmart, gonna get some groceries. Probably cheaper buying them here than some remote little village. Uh, Fred's gonna buy a life jacket too. You kind of forgot one. E3 on board. DFO, or I guess uh, Coast Guard rigs. Got myself one uh, adult universal life jacket. So, uh, yeah. Should do the trick. Yeah, we'll be safe. Safe and sound on the nice, water. Uh, nice seat, man. Yeah. <laughs> Clayton was in the area we're going to recently, and he caught 250 squid. He was killing it. I forgot my squid gear and my rod, but I'm going to buy one. It's worth it if I can bring some more seafood home. I'm going to truth. What do you think, like 15 bucks? Uh, 1799. 1799. 19. 14. Oh, 14, okay. Yeah, that's cheap. That's not too bad. That's I wish you had more of them. Yeah. We're on the highway and I got a little air pressure light come on when we were driving. I think one of my tires is going flat. Of course, that's going to happen in a remote spot. I got BCAA and I got a spare tire on board. Uh, Fred's also a heavy duty mechanic, so we got our bases covered. Uh, but fingers crossed, it's just uh, low on air and I don't need to replace the tire. What is the situation? Well, I mean, you're driving, you know, not yeah. that great, so you keep running on nails. I know, man. So we got a flat on the rear left. It looks like it's probably patchable, but it's never given until you get the plug in there to see if it's actually going to seal properly. So we'll give it a shot. Luckily, we, uh, we made it to the gas station though, and we found this uh, repair kit. So fingers crossed. And worst case, yeah, we just put the spare on, but uh, we're stuck going 60 all the way back home. Not a huge deal, but we want to be able to cruise on the highway. Let's see what it is. Let's see what you picked up. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. a razor blade. A razor blade? What the hell? Yeah, it's the Buddha. Damn it. That's probably like the worst thing to go in there. Yeah, yeah. I mean, hopefully it's a tiny little pinhole. Yeah. It, it doesn't look that that deep, so this is barely long enough to do a puncture. Yeah. So I think it should be patchable. That's good, that's good. It's gonna be hard to get the plug in because the hole is so small. Then you almost is all the way in and then... Thanks, Fred. I, uh, I knew I invited you for a reason. <laughs> yeah, the, yeah, the right passenger for this. You're the well, bad... Let's see if it holds up first. You know? Yeah. You're the bad luck, but you're also the cure for the bad luck. Well, that was a minor inconvenience, but I learned how to plug a tire, so thanks, Fred. Saving the day. And it could have happened earlier on a trip, and we could have been stranded on a highway putting on a spare tire, so it uh, worked out really nicely. Uh, the guys were a bit delayed launching the boat anyways because of an extremely low tide. They're looking for a backup plan, so we're not even really behind schedule, which is great. Uh, sun's out. Don't see too much wind. Looks like we're going to have a beautiful day out there. Well, what's up, guys? Good man, how you doing? Uh, doing real good. Nice Pretty... day out, except uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the tidal situation, but uh, so it's all good, man. We'll make it work. Of course, because we're with Chris and Fred. Oh oh yeah. God. Look at the beard, man. <laughs> how much did it grow so It's this flotation device. It traps a bunch of air, and it just allows them to float. <laughs> you don't even need a life jacket. <laughs> That's pretty low, eh? Mission accomplished. Nice. This was gonna be my last spear fishing trip of the summer, so I was pretty keen on bringing some decent seafood home. Getting offshore with a boat on the west coast is my favorite time to harvest. When the conditions are right, the rewards can be plentiful. The conditions can be extremely hit or miss though, so that's the trade-off. We just got here. We're all excited. We're anchored out in 28 feet of water. Trying to buy a boat. 70, 80 feet of water, so a nice pinnacle. 
visibility is looking questionable, but fingers crossed that it opens up once we get down there. Uh, we're gonna have fun though, regardless, and bring some fish home. Let's Hopefully. Go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. We ended up hitting an algae bloom. See what I mean? I have the tendency to shoot the first few fish I come across. I'm usually anxious to switch my camera around and get to filming what's around me. But I really try to fight that urge, slow it down, and take my time with the trigger. It wasn't easy as I was seeing some decent fish on my first few drops. Mike wasted no time and landed a beautiful black rockfish. I came up from a drop and spotted a wolf eel. I went back down in hopes to film it, but had no luck. It wasn't until I was editing that I saw its head sticking out of a rock at the beginning of this clip. I guess I was distracted by all these lingcod. I call these guys jailbait. They're borderline 65 centimeters. It's best to err on the side of caution unless you're positive. There are no size restrictions for black rockfish, but I try to go for the upper mid-size ones. I found a pretty decent school and my patience had worn off. Time to harvest. How the first dive, I like went to the kelp bed, I gone down, and I didn't notice I'm a sandwich to between a ravine. <laughs> yeah, and it's like big kelp wall, big kelp wall, and then uh, like literally two baby wings were there. That's where I saw the other two. And I was keep trying to uh, follow that uh, school of rock thing. But man, I just couldn't keep up with them. Oh, I know. You, you can't, you can't outswim a fish. That's kind of hard. Maybe fish is gonna always outfish you. Yeah. <laughs> we went out to one more spot, but it was a lackluster, and we we're all pretty tired. It wasn't in vain though. We ended up spotting a lone sea otter floating around, and I captured some pretty awesome footage. I love these gnarly little guys. Keep plowing through all those sea urchin, my friend. How was day one, Fred? Ah, uh, pretty good. I mean, not that many fish, but uh, water was good. It was warm at the surface, I'll tell you that, but on the bottom, not so much. Oh, I really? kind of regret putting the five mil on. Yeah. I think yeah. tomorrow's a seven mil kind of day. You brought two, right? Yeah, yeah, I got I got lots of them. Smart. Right, there we go. Oh, it's not awful on the inside. No, that's not too bad. It's better than some of the units you've had before that we paid like 500 bucks a night for. That's a good point, man. Yeah, it actually arrives with a real stove. Yeah. And a sink and a fridge. I think that one spot it said it sleeps eight and it was like a shoebox. Yeah. Or like a bed and a coach. Yeah, like a, one, a one burner tabletop stove. Yeah. Wally paid for our hotel. Thanks a lot, Wally, for bringing that stove on your boat. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, yeah, Fred said thanks, thanks, dude. And thanks for uh, offering up these accommodations for us. Huge help. That renovation took all my money. I don't have the cash right now for trips like this, so uh, without his assistance, I wouldn't be here. Thanks again, man. So we came here looking for some squid jigs, and we don't see any. Um, I know squidding is very popular. you think they would account for that, but uh, no squid jigs here. We got a couple in the vehicle, uh, but I was hoping to get a backup in case we lose some. It's uh, approaching 8 o'clock, and we're going to go look for some squid. And I go jig around. Usually people are competing for fishing spots, but from what I have researched, the more people the better because it creates a bit of a fishing frenzy or squid frenzy, I guess you call it. Uh, so if there's more people down there, I'm all for it. We came, we gave it our all, but there's no squid here. We tried our best. We talked to some locals and they said uh, they took off about a week or two ago. There's been nothing, but they'll be back here again sometime this summer. I think you have better success when there's all the fishing boats out and with the lights. None today. But uh, not giving up. Next time I'm back here, I'll try again. Oh, I wanted some squid. Day two, I think uh, Fred and I both slept pretty good. 
it's foggy out, but no wind. Uh, so that's uh, going for us. We're gonna go do a quick ice run, and then we're gonna launch the boat. Actually, boats in the water, we're just gonna depart from the marina, cruise out, get in the water. Uh, today is gonna be a good day. We're gonna get a good dive in, and then uh, head back to head back to Nanaimo. Fred's gonna drive back to Victoria. And then I'm heading off to the mainland tomorrow, but I get one more day with the kids and half a day today with the kids. Next week, going back to Fort McMurray for another couple of days. Um, I'd have to go a few more times this month. Uh, nice to catch up with uh, old coworkers. So no complaints for me, but I uh, hit the road, get rolling. Second time's the charm. Yeah, want some ice? I got ice. Yeah. What you got, man, new toy? Yeah, doing some uh, product testing. Nice. Oh, don't show the logo, does it? <laughs> we don't know if it's good yet. It's true. You guys uh, sleep good last night? Hey, yeah, yeah, all right. Y'all ready for the dive? Oh, uh -huh. more than ready. I think today is going to be better. Yeah, man. No wind today. How about you, man? You sleep good, Captain? Oh, yeah. Yeah, ready for action. Yeah, me too, man. Guide me to the right spot. You guys have fun. Yeah. Let's hope he uh, catches some fish, too. Oh, he's got a wound on him. We're wrecking it out in a really nice scalp bed right now. The structure on the chart looks awesome too. So I think we're gonna find some fish here. Uh, rockfish and maybe a ling. I took my time the day prior, but I was a little less patient on the second day. This ended up backfiring a little later on, but zero regrets. I still had fun and brought home some healthy food. I've learned my lesson a few times and try hard to avoid shooting into the rocks. There we go. Some more jailbait. I'm pretty sure this one was good though. Spot number one was a pretty nice structure. I did end up getting two Deacon rockfish. The one I did a long shot on and shot him in the belly and ruined half the fillet, so that was a waste. But I'll be able to salvage some, uh, some meat. We're gonna hit up a second spot Fred has had success at in the past and uh, look for some more fish. How are you feeling, man? Doing good. Hopefully I can equalize a little better on this one. But saw some pretty cool stuff. Man, I never saw painted greenling before. They're so cool. Yeah, man. They're like tropical yep. little fish. The structure was really nice, but I wasn't seeing a whole bunch. I shot my last rockfish and filmed some of the life I saw swimming around. Like this China rockfish. And this painted greenling. Look at him dance. Fred got my attention. He shot a beautiful cabazon. He was playing the wait and see game and was being extremely selective over the course of our two days. That spot was pretty decent, really nice structure. We shot a nice cab. Yeah, yeah no, nothing huge, but it's got some meat on it, so that's nice. Yeah, that was a good sized fish. I already shot my three rockfish, I didn't see the link cod. I didn't find any cabs. I might even uh, target some green link at the next spot, um, bring home some more fish and ultimately aim for a link cut. Uh, but time will tell, we're gonna go to a new spot none of us have been to. You guys having a fun time? Oh yeah, seen a lot of nice stuff, nice color and everything, anemones. Yeah nice man, stuff. you saw those uh, painted greenling, right? Oh yeah, I never saw them before, it's so beautiful. They are man, they're cool fish. How about you Captain, you killing uh, it? Oh yeah, weather beautiful, company beautiful, and we have perfect day underwater, just look for link cut. Hell yeah. <laughs> my goal was a link cod, but I'm never too proud to shoot a greenling. Ceviche is one of my favorite meals, and I prefer using greenling for ceviche over link cod or rockfish. 
Plus, they're one of the more sustainable options, so it's a win-win, unless you're a Greenland. We all swam over to a pinnacle and found a massive school of large black rockfish. Fred's patience paid off, I had already shot my three. The viz was crap or I would have been filming the school. I did find a cab though, small, but it was delicious. Let's see there, buddy. Woohoo! Look at that. I think it's blue as blue as can be. Yeah, big old black rockfish. Hell yeah, man. That's a good cab too. Nice, nice work here. Yeah. That was probably one of the better spots of this trip. As soon as we dove down on that pinnacle, there was really big, black, mature rockfish. Uh, I think I saw the odd yellow tail. Uh, they were skittish because the visibility was bad, but uh, I already harvested my threes, so irrelevant to me. I was looking around for a link cod, no luck. Uh, shot my two green ling though, and I crept up on a cabazon and uh, brought a little small guy home. I'll have some good flays off it. Fred uh, killed it today. I was being really selective and got three really nice black rockfish. I uh, got himself a nice cab and also a linka, real big blue linka. I say real big, but probably 75, 80 centimeters. So really, really good eating size. Awesome time out in the West Coast. Uh, thanks Matt, thanks Mike, thanks Fred, and thanks Wally for bringing us out on your boat. Really, really fun time. I'm uh, gonna be heading back into port and driving home. Well, we get some food on the way though. If there's a way to measure a successful spearfishing trip, this would be it. No energy was left unconsumed. Thanks for watching. Throw a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video. Peace and love.